You know who annoyed me yesterday? Go on. Darwin Nunes. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he me is... Yesterday. He really did. He is one of the most wasteful strikers around yeah, at the moment. It, unfortunately, that, that is the case. And he, he, Liverpool fans will always stick up for him because it, it gives you 10 out of 10 in effort. And that's sometimes what you want, right? 10 out of 10 in effort. But I can't have a player that sometimes looks like a 10 mm. where you feel, oh my God, he's really that good. And then sometimes looks like a two. Mm. I can't have that. I'd rather have a dirt kite that gives me a six and seven every single week. The problem is as well, you know, when you start praising somebody for demonstrating effort, yeah, it, it reminds me. It reminds me of that Chris Rock line, you know, where he says, "Stop expecting praise for doing something that you're expected to do." I look after my kids. Yeah, of course you look after your kids. That's what you're supposed to do. Mm. I put effort in at work. Yeah, you're a centre forward. Of course you put effort in at work. You don't get any special dispensation or any special credit. You shouldn't. You're right. Simply because you put in a lot of a lot of work. I think I think it's a ludicrous approach. The other thing that I find very very annoying, you know, if I were to describe a footballer. Any footballer in the past, prior to Darwin Nunes, and the and the word that I chose was chaotic. I think that that would have negative connotations in your mind. If I went always oh, a chaotic forward, you think that's bad news? You'd be thinking of Ben Jani or like just players that never quite had the ball under control. You know, it can be effective, but they weren't quite quality. Mm. We seem to have like redefined what the word chaotic means. We seem to have created a new metric in football to define a footballer. We go Darwin Nunes causes chaos as if it's a good thing. And I understand what what's implied. I understand what's being said. He he disrupts. Yeah. He causes the the defensive line of the opposition. Which, which by the way, a which is very good. Let's not let's not discredit that. It uh, is that, that's very good. It is. But I would say I would say that Dennis Burkamp caused disruption to the opposition. But he didn't do it via the prism of chaos. He would do it via his own brilliance. Chaos doesn't strike me as something that is is always a good thing. Yeah. And no, and, no. and look, I don't understand. No, no, I, how. I, I, I want to stick up for him. I really do. Look, I, I, I you know. And some instances I love him. Some instances I want to smash my TV. Mm. Like when he's going through on goal yesterday, I'm thinking, I don't know what to expect. Yeah. I'm like, is he going to score this or is he going to go in the, th- the third row? And it the, the, the other thing that I would say about him, I don't feel like he's improved to the level that we would have necessarily expected. In fact, Daddy, I think that we could have been having this exact conversation, word for word, everything that we've said today, mm. bearing in mind he's now been at Liverpool, fairly, like, you know, decent chunk. Yeah. I think we could have been having this conversation once he played six games for the club. Yeah, he got 15 goals in all comps last season. He's got 18. But this, this is the season. problem. Because he scores a lot, it almost pavers over the cracks. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's a lot. I don't it's, actually it's think a decent return when you when you think of when you think of you know the golden the golden boot is potentially going to be no, won no, no, by no, no. twenty goals. Yeah, but this I, year. I said eighteen in all competition. He's got eleven. He's got eleven in the Premier League. Yes, I said eighteen in all. Eleven in the Premier League. Eleven in the Premier League. For a Sixty-four when, million pound strikers. But, maybe but, not but enough. when twenty is probably going to win the golden boot. Eleven so far is in. I don't think that's a that's a, a an embarrassing tally. Maybe. All right. Let, let's go to the phone lines again. They are lighting up. Liverpool fans really wanting to speak about this situation. Let's go to Lewis. First Liverpool fan, uh, Lewis. Um, on the Darwin Nunes point, I know you, you've come to make another point, but on, on the Darwin Nunes point, what's your thoughts on him? Again, I think he can be a ten one week and a, a two the next, and that that just frustrates me. Yeah, I, I have to agree. I do love him. I think the style of play is, is very attractive. He's obviously got a char- very charismatic player, and he's. Um, yeah, great for the club and moments of absolute brilliance, absolute ten, like you say. But I think the problem is that there's not a player in the team we've got. If we lack a player who can coach him now, if we had likes of Gerard or even Henderson in the team to, mm. to, to just get his focus, it's, it's his composure is just sometimes that last that last composure is where it where it lacks, and it's it's hard to watch sometimes. Yeah, because sometimes it looks like when he has to think, when he's going through on goal and he has to think, then there's a problem there. Instinctively, I mean, you can look at the goals against Newcastle early in the season. When he doesn't have to have time to think, it's just incredible. It really is. Yeah. On the Europa League uh, game uh, last night, Anfield, what do you think happens in the second leg? Do you think Klopp rests or do you think he just goes goes for it, gun ho? Yeah, I think we've got to go for it. I think like we've made it hard for ourselves and put a position in the league now where... We're not favourites. We weren't. We should have been. We should have put it to bed a long time ago. We've cost ourselves points where we should have really just um, be, we should be clear now. At least mm. three of six points at least. And um, we've made it hard for ourselves there. It's Klopp's last season. If he wants to go out with anything now, we should be really turn these games round. We know we can do it. We've done it against Barcelona. Um, why why not get there against Atlanta? And like I say, we've got the, the full strength of God to do it. Um, just go for it. 
Yeah, no, I, I agree. One hundred percent. I think we've all the players are coming back now. Trent was on the bench. Jota got some minutes as well. I think we, I think we are doing it. Let's get Mark in as well. We can very quickly. Uh, Mark, do you kind of echo what Lewis is saying there? Do you think we should just go for it now? I think um, if you don't go for the Europa League, you're not guaranteed the Premier League. Anything could happen. So if you're just going to risk the Europa League for the Premier League, you could end up with just the Carabao Cup. And personally, I don't think that's enough for clubs last season. But in the but position again, we're in, seven games to go, joint top with Arsenal, it's only goal difference separating the two. Surely if you kind of just go all in on the Premier League now, it's a position, it's a fantastic position to be in, rather than maybe risk tiredness and injury in Atalanta, no? I think, um, I was discussing this with my dad, I think Liverpool this season are flattered to deceive a lot. I think we haven't been playing the greatest, but yes, we've still been winning and you know that's a sign of a true team when you're not playing while you're winning. But I, what you said about Darwin Nunes earlier, last night, he frustrated me. I love Darwin, <laughs> but uh, there's only so much chances. He needs at least four chances a game to put one away. Yeah, you're being kind at four. Yes, I know. Yes. Like last night when he went, he should have went around the keeper or something when he had that chance. He tried, I think he got to confident with the Brentford chip that he tried to do it again to the point I thought the keeper saved it but he put it that wide Are you, are you all being a little bit uh, just just a little bit defeatist here we've seen Liverpool Liverpool Football Club as an institution perhaps more so than any other team certainly that I can think of in world football have proven time and time again that the first leg is only half time Liverpool Football Club have proven that they are totally capable of coming back in adversity against far trickier sides than a side containing Davide Zappa Costa there is no reason <laughs> for you to not believe that you are capable of going through no. it look I appreciate no, I... it's unlikely I appreciate their favourites but I don't understand why you're not saying look we can do this this is almost set up to be no. to be one of the greatest nights in, in Klopp's tenure to go there and win 4-0 I do think no no that's what I'm saying I want them to go all out for the second leg because I know if Liverpool turn it on, they could do another comeback like they did against Barcelona. So what I'm saying is I don't want them to just sacrifice your league for the Premier League. Oh, good, good. Because surely, you know, if you're an Atalanta fan or even a player, you would be aware of Liverpool's prestige in European competition. Yeah, you would be you aware of the coming. history. Yeah. And if, if Liverpool suddenly go 1-0 up, you know, Trent Alexander-Arnold's back in the team. Yeah. Liverpool go 1-0 up within the first half an hour even. It's on. Yeah, I think that the Atalanta fans will know that it's a game. They'll know that there's that there's reason to be fearful, and we know that this Liverpool team have an have an aptitude to score goals. You know, they need to go there and score goals. I appreciate that there's something slightly profligate about this Liverpool team. I appreciate that Nunes isn't finishing as he should, and even even Diogo Jota, who's probably the best finisher at the club. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.